Amen. Welcome, y'all. I am so glad that you are here. Isn't that video, it's really about what this whole entire day is about. Because I don't know about you, but I, I find it hard sometimes to keep my attention on who God says that I am. Not the negative voice in my own heart or the popular opinion that's been projected on me by the likes or the followers and Instagram and snap em chat. That's what my husband calls it, snap em chat. Or all of the childhood traumas and things that tempt to define us. We've come into this house today because I want to remind you who you are and whose you are, most importantly. And if anything else is communicated today, I want you to get the truth that we each individually have been woven by heaven's hands. Is that humbling? The hands that designed the universe, girl. <laughs> the hands that designed the universe designed each one of us individually. He knit us together with his purpose and his intent. And I'm praying that throughout this day that he begins revealing what that is. And that you will purpose in your heart to be all that he says that you are. And that you will reject the lies of the enemy. Amen. If this is your first time here at our Sisterhood event, this is our Girl Talk session. And so it's backed by popular demand. I hear so many testimonies of things that have been done or said uh, during this session. These sessions that have ministered from the heart of God to the hearts of his daughters, his children. And so I'm going to challenge you, number one. This is our soul sisterhood scripture is, say to wisdom, you are my sister. And I love to point out that we don't get rid of sisters. I mean, we like to sometimes. And we might even try to, but you know what? They're part of our DNA. Um, and so I, found, I have found throughout my life that many times uh, trying to be the lips of wisdom which that represents those voices of truth in your life, the ones who speak God's truth according to his word in your life. There's times in our life that we don't want to hear them because right. we kind of like what we're the mire and the mud that we're playing in for a little while. But I want you to know, I want you to lean in and stay connected to that sister in Christ who's speaking truth over your life, who's going to point you back to the word of God, God, even if it's offensive because it is uh, contrary to where you're at for the moment. Because you recognize that it's in love when someone speaks truth of God's word because he has what's best for you in mind. And if they're speaking his mind, they're speaking what's best over your life. So lean in and listen. That's what this session is. And these ladies are three of my probably most intimate friends. Y'all know me. I kind of keep my life out on blast anyway for everyone. But these friends are, uh, I, re I recognize I'm not super nurturing a friendship. Even in parenting, I have to work on being a little more nurturing as a mama. And um, the closest friends probably in my life are those who really nurture that friendship, who keep inviting me in, who keep showing up uh, at random moments. Nadia Keith, on my birthday several years ago, I mean, my bra, I'm asleep at six o'clock in the morning, my bra's in the floor, slobber's dried to my face. All of a sudden, someone comes in my bedroom door and says, happy birthday. <laughs> six o'clock in the morning with donuts and coffee and I'm like girl let me get a bra on at least uh, and it was so sweet she had messaged my husband and found out when my mom said I was born and she wanted to show up at six o'clock in the morning just <laughs> that's a good friend if you show up yeah like that so I want them to introduce themselves and then I will lead us into our conversation but the most important part I want this to feel like you're sitting in my living room in case you don't have the lips of wisdom, I want you to um, sense what it feels like to have a sister in Christ sitting there. I want you to become part of this conversation. So just relax, enjoy the conversation, take note when the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart because these are lips of wisdom. They're women, they're students of the word of God. They're not perfect. We probably have hurt each other. We probably offended and will one day. But I think when you know the heart of a person, you know that they love the Lord and they would never intentionally want to hurt you. You can lean in to those friendships and offer grace and forgiveness and things. They have to offer me a whole lot, I assure you. So introduce yourselves. Push it straight up on me. Okay. Hold it closer. I'm Nadia Keith. Go ahead. 
Tell us about you, Nadia Keith. She's a teacher I, and I'm a, a teacher, I'm a mom, I have a teenager and a fifth grader that's about to be a teenager. So um, I'm married and um, you I'm teach married. girls on Wednesday nights. Too. I do, so she's I a serve teacher Wednesday nights. I love it. I love serving on Wednesday nights. Um, you know, sometimes you you just have to find that time to serve God and I just love it. And if you know her at all, y'all out there, she probably invited you and you just didn't want to say no and you came. I'm so glad you came. <laughs> I love her for that. I have rejection issues, but she just loves real big and I'm like so thankful for who you are in my life. Hello, I am LaDonna Ash. My husband and I are pastors at Wagner First Assembly of God. Um, Sean and I have been friends for a really, really long time. And um, I'm a school teacher, I'm a mom, I'm a wife. I wear a lot of different hats. Yeah, treasure. That's what she is. She's a treasure to me. And if you've been here before, you've heard a little testimony, so I won't bore you with that. But God brought her into my life and um, just orchestrated our friendship. And I thought I was going to be her friend, but really I needed her more than anything. <laughs> And I cannot, like, literally, aside from God and my my immediate family, that this friendship is the most treasured thing. I don't know how I do life without it, truthfully. Hello, I'm Terry Guthrie. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm married. Um, we have a medical practice that I help out with. Um, I have two kids that are grown, and I'm a Mimi. And I love it. What? A hot <laughs> Mimi. That's what that My is. My baby, as a matter of fact, was here the other uh, Thursday. And she has her little touches. Probably there's like bun buns it's somewhere perfect. around here. But yeah, so that's my life. And uh, I love this church. And I've attended this church since, which you will hear if at some point, since I'm 13 years old. So this is my home and I love it. So. And she serves God through this church. She serves her heart out. And her husband is our worship leader, a deacon. And Sister Guthrie, can you stand up and wave at us? I caught a glimpse of your face. Sister Gre Guthrie, this is Terry's mother-in-law. Yep. But she is the matriarch of this house. She and her husband raised up this church. And uh, she and two of her sons still serve in this church faithfully. And this family has made us a part of their family. And they are a treasure to me. And very specifically, Terry, you know she's so hospitable. Um, and she makes you, like, never want to leave her house because she takes such good care of you. And she keeps inviting you into it. And um, she's kind of my girl. Sometimes I have to weigh the Holy Spirit and Terry's spirit because she's like, let's go beat somebody up. <laughs> Like <laughs> every now and then she'll I go get ahead that and be from like, my no. dad. <laughs> every now and then she'll be like, Shauna, now the Holy Spirit, uh, you need to straighten out. But every, usually she's like for me, you know, like even if I'm in the wrong, she's like, get it. Let's get, let's do it. I so, don't care if you're wrong. Let's do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. So the goal of today, and I think friendships help, help remind you of your identity in Christ if they're godly friendships, because there's times that people put labels on you. People reject you, despise you, your friendships. Young people, I've got a young girl, they're all already experiencing Stella Ruth. She's 12. This is her first year here. Um, and sometimes we get, uh, we take in what other people think of us. And then we start living like that. And it's the godly friendships in our life that remind us that's not who you are, Shauna. Like you might want to uh, go jump somebody because you got a little hood in you. <laughs> but remember, that was BC days before Christ. Like you've been <laughs> redeemed. Uh, and they remind you who you are uh, when you question it, even in yourself. And so I love that today as we explore our identity in Christ, Priscilla Schreier said, it's important for us to explore our identity and value in Christ because she says, whether or not you walk in victory is directly correlated to what you believe about yourself. Mm. Think about right now, what are you believing about yourself? What do you talk to yourself? What are the negative voices sometimes that you try to label yourself with? You will, uh, whether or not you walk in victory is de directly correlated to what you believe about yourself. You will live up to or down to whatever you believe to be true about yourself. 
So we've come in here to be reminded of truth, of what God says, of who we are, and begin to live our lives like that. And it brought me to a story in Genesis 29. I honestly have never loved the story of Leah. It makes me kind of sad and even offended because <laughs> I've just ended the story. I don't know about y'all, but I, and I'm a student of the Word of God, but I still want to compartmentalize stories. But when you start seeing the full picture of God's story and how He's woven His hand of grace and love and truth into the lives of each person, even the good, bad, and ugly of a life, you come to know God and how valuable he, he believes that you are to him. And so this Leah, she was, she ended up being married to her. It's found in Genesis 29. We'll talk more of it all day long, but she ended up uh, married to her sister's husband. Like, just get a picture of that for a minute. I mean, like, I, that's a horror soap opera. Like, they, someone needs to come up with horror so, soap operas because that's a, can you imagine you and your sister being married to the ma same man? Like, I want to throw up a little <laughs> at the thought because my sisters are really hot. <laughs> my sisters are real hot. I, I would be Leah in this story for sure. Um, anyway, and so she's married. <laughs> they are. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, they are married to the same man because some, some people say even her daddy believed he wouldn't be able to find anyone to marry her. So he tricked the man into marrying Leah, who really wanted to marry her sister, Rachel. He loved Rachel. He wanted Rachel. He never wanted Leah. And he was tricked into Leah. He woke up after the marriage night and was like, what? I thought that was Rachel. And so we find that she lives this life, I feel like this life of just being rejected by a father, a, a husband, a sister even then, because that, that created a lot of chaos. But the Word of God teaches us that God looked on Leah. God looked on Leah with favor all of that time, and he gave her children, and her sister Rachel was not able to have children initially, and so he favored Leah, but I recognize that Leah kept looking for the validation of men, even when she acknowledged God's validation. And so with her children, each one she names them, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, they each stand for now... She says, God has seen that I'm unloved. She acknowledges that God sees her. But then she says, but now maybe my husband will love me. I wonder what our buts are. Like God is validating you and values and sees you. But what are you filling in the blank? Now God has heard me is what uh, Simeon's name believes. God has heard that I'm unloved and he's given me a son. Now my husband with Levi, she says, now my husband will be attached to me. I think that speaks of our desire to be accepted. So these three things are like uh, parts of the human heart that I think we all desire. Don't you want to be seen? Have you ever felt like you were just hidden in a crowd and no one even knew you were there? Have you ever wanted to be heard and someone literally walks away from the conversation or is looking on their phone? I get so offended at my husband. I'm like, you are not listening. What did I just say? What did I just say? Uh, it, it's devaluing. Very. I feel so small when someone won't give you the time to just look at you and pay attention to what you have to say and listen to your heart. And then, of course, that need to feel accepted. Sometimes we come into women's groups and churches even because there's this deep interwoven desire. I think that God's woven it into our lives to feel connected and attached and so I, the goal is that we learn to, that, to find all of those needs met in God. And he does use people oftentimes. But I wanted to ask these ladies about those three things. Like LaDonna first, uh, because I just wrote a quote when we just chit-chatted. But um, when have you felt unseen in your life? And uh, tell us about some experience at some point that you felt unseen and how God maybe brought it full circle in your life, or maybe you're still trying to heal. I very much felt unseen by my dad. My dad was, um, my mom and my dad, I have no recollection of them ever being together. Um, divorced, my mom took visitation rights away from my dad um, because she felt like he left me in an unsafe um, situation and circumstance. And um, so it kind of left, my dad didn't fight for me. Like, 
I can't imagine not seeing my child or having rights. And I always wanted my dad to like fight for me and to like want to see me, you know? And so I remember this one, I don't know why this situation stands out so clearly to me, but there was one, I had like a program at school and I must have invited him to it. And, um, we were singing and after I was done, you know, they send you to find your parents. And my mom was like, your dad's here. And I remember like running through the crowd, trying to find my dad. And I had to chase him down to see him for him to see me. You know, like I can't imagine not saying after a program and like hugging my child and say, Oh, you did such a good job, you know, as a mom, that that was my relationship with my dad. So it kind of created this like need to be seen um, in my life and wanting to be seen in my life. And really, I think, you know, it took time for me to see that it was the Lord that needed to be the one to see me and not other people. And so it kind of created this chaos. I love this quote. Like when you and I were just sitting and chit chatting, you said, I had to stop trying to be seen by the people I wanted to be seen by. And notice how God's eyes were on me. I had to notice the people he had placed in my life to reveal that I am seen, that he sees me. Yeah, it was very much that because I remember him, he gave me the scripture Zephaniah 317 during a time where I was really trying to um, undo that trauma or that, that experience in my life, those words that were being validated through situations, I was like, you know what, Lord, this is not who you've called me to be. I don't have to, I'm not supposed to fight for any of this. For value. For value, to be for seen. work, to be seen, he any sees. of it. Yeah. And he gave me the Zephaniah where he sings over you with a song. And if I'm not, if I may be wrong, but I think this is a time where Israel is in, is in exile. And even in those dark places, in those hidden times, the Lord sings over you. He delights in you. And I had to have that, that reiteration, that, that constant, that affirmation that no matter where I am, what people here on earth or what, what's in store, God sees me and his hand is on me and that he is weaving my story. It's beautiful. And don't you think so many times we're chasing the attention of someone that is not even who God has for us. We shouldn't have to take chase that attention. God's put someone and many times it's people that he uses to remind you that he does see you with Leah. He gave her a son and he says, I see you. I think that's so beautiful because we were at a, at a conference last weekend and the lady was just saying how every time she got pregnant, she prayed that God would give her a song to sing over her children and how these songs actually became very prophetic. I can't remember them, but one was like healing is in his wings over my, I don't remember what it was, but her child got sick later on. And then after she had that child, she realized that that song came to her heart about how God would heal the sick and before that child was born, she didn't even know that that would apply. And those words to that song didn't really mean a lot. But then in those dark moments, she remind, she was reminded that God's already gone before her. And he has good plans for her and her children. And I love that idea that your father or that our father sings over us in dark places. When you are unseen, when other people have rejected you, when you're in exile and in a dark place, you have a daddy who never leaves you and never forsakes you. And he delights in you and he sings over you. And I believe it's a psalm that says that even in darkness, darkness is as day to the Lord. Like his light is that bright, even in our darkness, it, he shines brighter. Yes. So learning to turn to him and that, um, Terry, I know that I mentioned times that, uh, and do y'all have anything to say about that, about being seen, feeling unseen moments of being unseen or how God has ministered to you in those moments? I just know that God is always our validator. Like Sometimes we tend to lean toward seeking validation from somebody, but we're seeking that from somebody that's flawed. Yes, say that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So then then your perception of who you are becomes flawed. I mean, it already is yes, flawed, but then it's good. just even more 
you know, and so I think that um, God has really taught me some things about how that when we're unseen, God sees us. He, and something that we've talked about before is he prepares a table for you. In the presence of in your the enemies. presence of your enemies, that means and even and it doesn't even it can be enemies of the mind. I even think yeah, that's even good. rejection, even hurt, even devalue or unloved or whatever. He can prepare a table for you. you and know? you see how it's a lie too. Like yeah, your dad probably never even thought anything. He was just parenting maybe the way that he parented. Yes. He probably never thought yeah. how devaluing it was that he. You had to go chasing down because he was just going to come and go without even saying goodbye. Or he didn't know it wasn't on purpose. So then the enemy starts spinning the lies. Because he's, tell he's flawed also. I mean, and I love that what you just said because I wrote when, as I studied, I said, Isn't it the love and grace of God sometimes that he doesn't allow us to have the attention of whoever we're wanting? Because he knows they are flawed. He knows one day they're going to be praising you and one day they're going to be crucifying you. Yes, you know what I'm saying? And so God, sometimes I think he even withholds what we want so badly, not because he's a bad God, but because he's a good God. And he says, hey, girl, get your value from me. Remember that I see you when no one else sees you. And if people come, yay, praise the Lord, they come into your life and they see you. If they go, you're going to be all right yes. because you're mine. I'm sovereign God. I can move heaven and earth for you. I love that. So what about times that you, I've specifically, I've, I've noticed in different seasons of our lives, like I'm not an easily offended person at all. But then I notice different seasons of my life, like sometimes even hormones, girls, change. <laughs> or maybe there's a relationship in your life that's rocky and it never has been before and you start getting uh, insecure, and you start wanting to protect and you can find yourself being more easily offended. And I've, I've noticed that I have picked up more on not being heard lately. Like if someone, wa and y'all, I apologize in advance because I'm ADHD and I probably walk away from a conversation that you're having with me all the time. But can I tell you, you're valuable to me and I really want to hear what you have to say. Just grab me and drag me back over and say, I wasn't done. But like I... I struggle. I'm serious. It's bad. Sometimes I'll notice and I'll come back and I'll go, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I just walked away while you were still having a conversation. Uh, but I've, I've picked up on it more. Like it, it it's felt, made me feel very small when someone turns away in the middle of my conversation with them or when they are scrolling through their phone, because I guess maybe even my personality, I'm like a uh, empath. I feel things and I want to have feeling conversations. And like, if you're not interested, it's so stinking offensive. Get interested girls. But, um, no, it's me. I'm the problem actually. <laughs> um, so wh what about that? What times have you felt unheard or ignored and how has God ministered to your hearts in those moments and taught us not to put so much need um, and expectation on, on other people to validate us? Well, my personality has always been, a uh, pretty independent and a fixer. I love the thing. One time sister Shauna sent me a little thing and it was somebody wanted smoke at their wedding or whatever. And so here's this lady running around on all fours down, like lighting fireworks, trying to get, you know, like smoke come up and that's who I Have y'all seen it? It's like a, it's a like, TikTok or a meme. It's yeah. a couple getting married <laughs> and they want pictures with the smoky stuff all around them. And so there's this one woman, her maid of honor or whatever, she's got the smoke stick and she's like running around. Yeah, that's me. Me. I, that's what I would do. Because she's going to get the perfect picture yeah, for her Yeah, we're going to get that. that yeah. That's what you want. That's what we're going to do. She's a fixer. She's going to figure it out. But with that comes your voice. You know, you're, you need to tell people, like, you know, this is what we can do. This is whatever. And God taught me some time back that um, there were different times in my life where I did feel a little unheard. And sometimes it came in the form of, like, even my husband sometimes if we're going to have a disagreement, because we also work together and we do that life together. We do church together and we do our private life together. So there's a whole lot of that sometimes togetherness that is a lot of togetherness. Un unheard, you know, but we're he likes not to hunt though. Yeah. So she's secretly like, like, it's hunting season, right? Yeah. No, so, we love Brett and, Terry, and, we've and they had do friends, marriage beautifully. You well, do. we've had friends say, I don't know how you work with your wife. And then, you know, and it is God's blessed us to do that. But God kind of took me back to a time 
um, you guys have probably heard me mention, and people that have been in this church a while know kind of the history of our church a little bit, that um, my father-in-law um, was pastor here for 42 years. And a few years back, it's probably been 10, 12 years ago, um, maybe a little bit more. I'm not good on time frames, but um, my mom, it was before Thanksgiving, um, who I love very much, um, had something come up and needed to go to the doctor, so we took her. And, I mean, it was like I was in a fog. You know, they said, well, she has, she has cancer, and it's not good, really. It's small cell. It's not good for her. So there was that, and then within weeks later, my father-in-law was diagnosed with cancer, and I just felt like, you know, I had always talked to God. I'd always, you know, and that doesn't buy you anything. You know what I mean? We always say, well, I serve God. Well, yeah, we do serve God, but in a fallen world, things happen to us that we, and God gives us the grace to carry those things. But what I was saying was I was just totally like, talking to God and talking to people. And I'm like, I really did not foresee losing either one of them at all. Never, you know, I was just trusting God. But then, you know, things occurred. There was little miracles that happened. But then, and then sometime later, not within the year, I don't know, I call her Mima, but she probably can give you a better time frame. But he passed. I was so, like, I was standing there just like, are you serious, God? Like, I did not see that coming. And maybe it was just me in, like, a situation, like, I just wasn't seeing it clearly. But I had that faith in God. You know, like, you heard me. You heard my cry. And so I don't advise this to anybody, but I fell on my face and I started to pray. I'm like, my mom's health is lost. My father-in-law is lost. Uh, Now we got to figure out how we're going to do church. You know what I mean? Because we served alongside them for as long as I can remember. And I was just like... um, And he was a dearly loved pastor. Yes, he was. He was. So I was like, God, you know, you didn't hear me. Like, I was so just in a daze, kind of. And so I prayed this prayer. I fell on my face and I said, God, I love you. I will forever serve you. But I'm not going to ask you for anything. And I didn't say it disrespectfully. It, I thank God and I asked him for forgiveness later. But I just felt like I can't deal with not being hurt. Like a dis, the disappointment of just like, did you totally ignore our hearts? Because it wasn't just my heart. There was a whole church that was yeah. praying for both of them, you know. And then with that comes, well, if you let my father-in-law go, you're going to let my mom go too? Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. and, and that I'm not saying anything that that doesn't happen to people all the time that lose family members. That's, you know, maybe both at the same time or whatever, like, you know, we've seen people experience. But I was just like, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, and I just got up and I did. I served him. I continued to love him, but I would I wouldn't ask like I would not just, you know, for anything. But then something happened and the church kind of started to struggle some and I was like okay great so now my mom is still sick and I'm going to treatment with her my father-in-law's gone and now the people that I went to church with since I was 13 14 years old now we're struggling so now now what does this look like so I fell before again fell on my face I said God forgive me because here I am, you have a tender way of showing me that I need you. And I know that you must hear me because you've answered other things for me. So there must be a divine purpose here that we're, that I'm, we're going through this. So I said, I need you, God, I need you to be who I know you to be. And I need you to move in this situation because this church has been promised something And I really want that fulfilled, you know? So in that place, I found the scripture of Psalms. It was in Psalms 116 and 2. And there's different translations, but one of the ones was, when you you call me, I will hear you. You know, in in other other translations, it says, I will incline my ear to you. And you know what that makes me feel like? Like if you're going to talk to me and I really want to hear it, I'm going to say, hey. Donna. 
and you lean into me. Yes. So beautiful. Well, when she leans into me, that makes me lean into him. Yes. So he, I felt that he leaned into me and I leaned to him and I said, God, we need you now more than ever. And you know what? It was a beautiful thing. I'm not going to say it wasn't super, super hard. But one thing that I do see is I know that um, my father-in-law had, God had made him promises. And you guys, from there to here, you're living the promise. Amen. This was one of his promises. So God sees us, you know, and he hears us. And more than and just, even more the promise, he, uh, one of his last messages, I can't remember, Iron Shoes or I, something, yeah. but he said the Lord, he spoke the word of, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know the scripture reference, but people will come from the north, the, the south, east, the east, east and, and the, the west. west. And like literally, <laughs> y'all have come from those areas, yes. even in this house for this women's event. Yes. We have it posted on the wall just outside. Yes. He spoke and, that. And that was I a will promise say, God had given him. Yes, and I will say, you know, even though he's not here to see that because he's already in heaven, I will say that we get to see it. And you get to enjoy it. And that's a something that God has shown me is like, look, you're going to pray for things. And, I, you know, you're going to ask for things. And you may never see them, but they're going to happen. You know what I mean? That that's who God is. And my mom's here with me. So, you know, that was an answered prayer. See, there she is. She's here today. And she's a prayer warrior, too. So, so what I'm saying is God does hear us. He pays attention. I think in this part of my life, he's really been showing me, not only do, do you pray to me, and because sometimes we pray, and I don't know if you guys are like me, but sometimes when you pray, it's just like, okay, God, like, I'm praying, like, I'm talking to you, but I'm just not feeling like well, he pays attention. There has been a couple of things I'm not going to go into that didn't really mean. I mean, it wasn't life shattering or changing that I was talking to him about. And the one little thing that I asked for was God did it. And God just, the Holy Spirit just said, I'm paying attention to you. I see you and I'm paying attention to what you say. But I have a plan and I have a purpose and you have to trust that. And you know what I've learned? God's word for me has always been, trust me. You have to trust me. And, you know, I found out that the ultimate form of worship, you know, when Leah, you know, um, finally with Judah decided to praise God and worship, there is something that takes it off of what you're saying and what you're wanting to be validated for when you worship. And when you trust God, there's a scripture that says, trust God and do good. When you're doing good and you're trusting God, it takes everything off of what you're thinking and your mind and what your you rabbits. Need. What you need. Yeah. What, yeah. And it turns the focus on one thing, and that's God. He's your source. He's the only one. And through all of the things in my life that have been hard, God always says, remember who your source is. Remember who I am. Because the truth is, we're not enough. He no, is you're enough. Never. He knows if we will finally just turn mm -hmm. our attention on him. Mm -hmm. Stop looking for this to get mm -hmm. fixed and this to change and this person mm -hmm. to love me and that. All mm -hmm. those things. And we'll just fix our attention on him. Mm -hmm. He is the I am that I mm -hmm. am. Whatever you need, he is that. Mm -hmm. And he knows that we will yeah. be fulfilled in him if we would just fix our attention on him. And then he blesses us yeah. with the other things. A lot of times Little we're not needy things. of those yeah. things. We become too needy and we can destroy relationships mm -hmm. and friendships. Mm -hmm. But I just saw God just actually pick up a thread when you said woven. I thought it was so beautiful because even in the, that time where I was just like confused and I know that's of the enemy, he picked up a thread of grace and yeah, began to weave beautiful. it. And then he picked up a thread of mercy because he knew I needed it every day. He knew. Yes. And then forgiveness because, yeah, I should have never told him that. And I ask God all the time. I think about it and I'm like, I'm so sorry, God. I, I know. But and then he picked up that final of that thread of love that he loves me and he loves us. And, you know, no matter what and all the weaving in and out of your life, it becomes this thing that has character and it has depth and it has perception and it becomes something that 
you know, we can share with others, you know, and that's, I think that's too many God times we give up on God, because if you've ever looked at a cross stitch or tapestry on the wrong it's side messy. of it, it's yeah. a hot mess. It is. And I'm like, we'll give up on God. It's meant to be viewed from the finished yeah. result and the yeah. beauty of it. And we're on the backside of it looking because it's going to be heaven before it's completed and finished. And we're judging God and we're walking away from God and we're giving up on him mid because we just see a bunch of messy things yeah. you were going to say so many times we can make a choice and you made a choice to still show up sorry you make a choice to still show up mm -hmm. right. you know you still attended and i love we went to that, the conference and she mentioned that the body heals the body like god made our physical bodies with white blood cells that heal sores and mm -hmm. bones can be healed and so many times when we go to those broken places we quit showing up yeah. when it's say that hard. girl say that and so and I, I get it because I've had, I've had the very, th sometimes the body hurts the body yeah, well, and yeah. we quit showing up and we still have to show up. Maybe you don't need to go to that house anymore, but there are other houses that you yeah. still need to show up for because you either have a choice to run to him or you run from him and you can't get healing and that wound and that thing gets infected and it comes with bitterness and all kinds mm -hmm. of things. But if you go to the him and get the healing, mm -hmm. it doesn't have that. There may be a little scar. Yeah. There may be a little touch point. But you you, you learn to trust yeah. him that he works things for your mm -hmm. good. That's so mm -hmm. good that he weaves even those areas. Yes. Um, Leah's last son, his name is Levi. And some translation says, uh, Leah says, now my husband will be attached to me. And I, to me, when I was studying out, that meant acceptance. And we all have this need to be accepted. And we do have fathers who walk out or parents who walk out or spouses or friends who walk out of our lives that we were deeply dependent on. And we start struggling for this need to be accepted. And we start looking for it in the wrong places if we're not okay. Instead of into God who has before the foundations of the world chosen and accepted you. While you were yet a sinner, he died and he paid a price that showed you how valuable he was to you to give his most treasured possession. And so, Nadia, I wanted to ask you about a time that you felt maybe disposable like Leah or rejected by someone in your life and um, what, what God did through all of that. Okay, so it's a really a beautiful story. At, um, when you look at it now, uh, but before it was a mess. So I'll tell you because this story uh, made me grow in faith and um, I grew in my relationship with God. So, um, so there was a season in my marriage where I felt deeply rejected. Um, I did, uh, after reading, you know, Leah and Rachel's story, I was like, wow, I went through that because... I did, I did things that I thought would make my husband look at me and that would make him be happy with me, um, love me. Because really, um, I felt very unloved in this season of my life. And so I was like, wow, I was like, Leah, you know, I, I was doing some stuff that I thought would please him and that would get cl him close to me. But really, that didn't, that, that didn't work. It was not what we needed. So... Um, I remember just really praying and crying out to God, thinking, what, what do I, what do I do? Um, God, what, what should I do? And I went to a friend that I knew, I knew that this friend was going to speak wisdom to my life, to, that she would pray for my marriage. What's I, a friend me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's a friend me? <laughs> Because I wanted to interrupt. I wanted to interrupt and say something. I just remember this one time saying, Nadia, you are a person that is so full of love. She loves with her whole big heart, if you know her at, at all. And I just remember the season of her feeling very rejected and feeling in love, saying, Number one, that God loves you and he sees you. But number two, don't ever like uh, uh, 
LaDonna just said, my best friend, I can't remember her name. Um, <laughs> LaDonna just said, uh, keep showing up. I said, don't let a season of rejection and hurt and feeling unloved start building walls. And yeah. change who yeah. God made you to be. Because you love like nobody's business. I've never seen someone just openly love so big. And I've been a recipient of that. And I just remember just guiding you in some of those times as a lips of wisdom, the right sister in Christ, cheering for you to stay in it and know that your love isn't dependent on just a, a person, even your spouse. Your love comes from God. And then if we keep that fixed on him, we can love and not then begin to offer bitterness and rejection back out because yes. that's what we're receiving. And that's where having, um, having you like um, help me not have bitterness. And I was built, I, I wanted to build a wall. I did. I did not want to. We all do. We I, don't, I didn't want to get hurt again. So, but I remember that day that, Shauna talked to me and she told me this, that what she told you that um, she said, don't, don't let this change who you are because you look big and that's who God made you to be. And so I took that to heart because I said, she's right. Um, I, I do not want to become, um, I do not, I don't want to, the lies to like, just bring me down and change, you. change me. So I, you know, to this day, I, I still cry when I think about that. But I just want to say that, yes, my marriage went through a hard, hard time. And it was like, if you looked at a tapestry, it would be the back of it. It would be a lot of mess, a lot of loose ends, a lot of knots, and um, not pretty, just a mess. Um, but God, well, God did, now. yes, God, um, he just this i don't even know i just praise him because he completely turned my marriage around to even it's even better than it was before Amen. um how um he changed my husband's heart and um I remember, I just remember praying over you too, because we know the word of God. And when we agree with the word of God, there's power in that yes. truth. And we know that the word of God says he works everything together for our good. That's what he said. I didn't say it. And this was not good. This was not a good situation. I hated seeing my friend. I would, when she would leave my house, I would go cry. <laughs> I cry now in my closet because I didn't want her to feel unloved or rejected. But I remember praying and saying, God, if you can work good things out, would you do it quickly? And it felt and so did. quick. And and probably did. not for her, but like it's been a blessing to see. And I have watched this lady. Her life is a testimony. I've literally never seen someone purposely seek to walk out truth and wisdom and the word of God. Like I watched her do it when it hurt. And it hurt bad. I watched her do it when it was so hard and uncomfortable. And you are literally a beautiful testimony. <laughs> and I wanted to say this. I, go, go ahead. Did you have something else? Go ahead. Um, I just want to say that for anyone that you're struggling in your marriage, God can restore that. Yeah. God can restore your family. He, he will if you stay in his word and stay in his house and listen to wisdom. He will restore your relationships. You will grow from the pain. I, like I said, the back of it is a mess, but I, it's beautiful when you see it from, you know, after the storm, you know, it's, it's just beautiful. Uh, but God can restore your marriage, your relationships. And I was going to say something else, but I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you think about it, because I want you, if you have, do you have that thing oh, that I, I was going to have yeah, you read? I do. And then we'll, we'll kind of bring this to a close. But I just wrote when I studied, what if the rejection of men gets you the attention of God? Yeah. <laughs> what if the rejection, is it worth it then? Because it, 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 it's true biblically. If you think about Mordecai. The rejection of men when Haman came against him and how God turned his face as they began to fast and pray for God to intervene. And the very gallows that Haman built for Mordecai, Haman was hung on himself in his own yard. Well, 
I mean, I just love that. And it was hard for what Mordecai was going through, but God redeemed his story. He raised him up in command over that nation or whatever of Babylon. Um, I believe, was it Babylon now? Okay, sometimes I lose that. Leah is that example. God looked at her because she was rejected. Because she was unloved, he said, ooh, let me turn my attention. Let me direct beams right there. Uh, Joseph, David, Daniel, three. What if the rejection of men gets you the attention of God? And if you will turn your attention, like Terry said, he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Sometimes we want to destroy our enemies. Sometimes like God, kill them. Oh, they are like, yeah. But Ow. you know what? There's if you ever, if you ever to. fix your attention on God and you go, you know what? You do what you think you know is best. Because you know it all. Better. And then you watch him. And I believe that means like literally he begins to bless you yeah. in the face of your enemy. <laughs> and the blessing is better than their destruction. Let me tell you. When he blesses you and they have to watch. What? Okay. But anyway, will you read that little bit yes. about tapestry? And then I'll have LaDonna close us in prayer and we'll have an intermission. Okay. So I, this is a devotional in Bible Up. And the title is, God wastes nothing but weaves everything for his glory and our good. Have you ever compared the front and back of a tapestry? In the hands of a skilled weaver, the front displays incredible artistry and fine detail. What we see in the back appears to be a mess, only with some components of the image appearing. Where the front is smooth, the back is filled with knots and loose ends. We are meant to see the front of the piece with its intricate pattern at completion. Someday we will see the beautiful tapestry the Master Weaver has been creating through all the events in our lives, even the suffering. We will never cho have chosen some of the trials, nor do we understand them as they occur. Yet they are, they are all part of God's plan that tied together to his masterpiece. The theme weaver emphasizes that God wastes nothing but uses everything for his glory and our good. He turns things around. Amen. Scripture passages with their application are like multicolored texture threads woven to create a tapestry of God's truth and purpose in our lives. Amen. Amen. I love it. I'm going to let LaDonna pray and then we'll head into our next portion. Lord, I just thank you that you are the weaver that you are our father who sees and who works things for our good, even when it doesn't feel good. Lord, I pray, I thank you that you see us when we feel unseen, that you see us when we feel unheard, that you hear us when we feel unheard. Lord, all of our rejections and life circumstances, Lord, you are there in the midst, even in the darkest of nights. Lord, you are there, and I thank you that you are who you say you are, that you are faithful, and that you continue to show up, Lord. God, I pray for these ladies today, Lord, that you take your word and you put it in their hearts and you stamp it and you seal it, Lord, so that you can begin to weave their story together. Lord, help them to look to you when they want to look to other things. Lord, let their validation, their acceptance, and all the things come from you, Lord. We give you praise and we give you honor, Lord. Be with us the rest of this message and the rest of this day, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.